Your kingdom come and your will be done. 
nothing I can do With you there's nothing I can do I keep my eyes on you With you there's nothing I can do So I keep my eyes fixed on you With you there's nothing I can do With you there's nothing I can do With you there's nothing I can do There's nothing I can do I keep my eyes on you With you there's nothing I can do With you there's nothing I can do I keep my eyes on you
Begin to laugh, 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 laugh Cause what tried to derail you What tried to throw you off Is now your jump start Now your jump start Every plot and plan of the enemy That tried to throw you off That tried to derail you to try to tell you you weren't good enough and what are you doing? It just gave permission granted for even more, even more, even more. Cause I had so much store and ready for you anyway and it just became even more, even more, even more. So we will remember what you've called us to 
And we will remember what you've called us to. And we will remember what you called us to. We won't forget. No, I won't forget every word you've spoken over me and my family. I won't forget it. <laughs> Cause it just keeps getting better and better and better. It just keeps getting better and better and better. Just keeps getting better and better and better. It just keeps getting better and better and better. It just keeps getting better and better and better. It just keeps getting better and better and better. It just keeps getting better. And better and better It just keeps getting better and better and better and better Accelerated advancement I hear him say over you Accelerated advancement <laughs> I say yes, I say yes, I say yes <laughs> Try to clip your wings, but it's time to fly, fly, fly. <laughs> fly, fly,
worship, you're always worthy of it. never based on how I feel It's always based on who you are <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> It's not based on how I feel It's just based on who you are Ooh. Yes, and you're all Never based on how I feel It's just based on who you are Always faithful My feelings and my emotions Don't dictate my worship to you Cause you are always faithful You are always good you are always constant in and through it all Just based on who you are Just think back on all he's done for you Remember how far you've come Just think of every time he's come through for you Cause he's never gonna leave you He's never gonna leave you He's never gonna leave you <laughs> One thing always remains 
the same It's your love for me It was your love for me Cause I've been on the mountain top And I've been And I've been everywhere in between And only one thing stayed the same It's your love Your love never changing Cause I've been on the mountain top And I've been in the valley low And I've been everywhere in between And only one thing stayed the same It's your love It's your Testimony, cause I've been on the mountain tops, and I've been in the valley low, and I've been everywhere in between, but one thing stayed the same it was your love. Cause I've been on the mountain tops And I've been in the valley low And I've been everywhere in between And one thing stayed the same It's your love And I've been in the valley low And I've been everywhere in between And only one thing stayed the same It is your love Your stays the same it stays the same it stays the same it stays the same you love you love it stays the same never changes never ceases Stays the same. Stays the same. Cause I've been on the mountain tops, and I've been in the valley low, 
And I've been everywhere in between And only one thing stays the same It's your love Your love Your love Never changes. Never changes. It stays the same. It stays the same. It is constant. Constant. It is constant. Constant. You're the one I can count on. Cause you never change. You, you never change. change. You never change. Jesus, you're the one who never changes. Never changes. Never changes.
us in all your ways. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray like David prayed, one thing that I desire and that I will seek, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold his beauty and acquire in his temple. Lord, you are our one thing. You are our one thing. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your love for us, God. We thank you that you are here in our midst, Lord. And nothing compares to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, you may be seated. If you ever for one second thought my job was easy to come up here after that and to change directions, we need to talk after this uh, because it's such a strong presence. Uh, you know, we could just could you keep doing this for hours tonight. It's the glories here, amen? amen? It's so exciting to be in the presence of God and Excuse me, good to be, to be back in Tampa. A lot of familiar faces here. And, and um, yeah, praise God. This, is, uh, th uh, this area is on Kevin and Kathy's heart. This is one of our hubs, so to speak. And uh, we'll be here often, I'm sure. And uh, uh, Kevin had it on his heart to go coast to coast. So we're still on, you know, on this side, so to speak. We were in Concord Sunday. Georgia last night. Did you watch that last night in Georgia? Man, that was powerful. And then now here in Tampa Bay tonight. And for those who are watching, Texas tomorrow and Phoenix the next day and then Santa Maria the day after that. And so we're literally going coast to coast and uh, spreading the fire of God all the way across. We're sticking to the southern part of the U.S., but uh, uh, we're excited about everything that God's doing. So thank you for being here and Thank you for being a part. Uh, we're on this Holy Spirit tour, and so we're really excited about that. And um, a couple quick reminders, uh, uh, other than the, uh, the, the rest of the meetings that we're doing, I want to encourage you to plug into a Warrior Fellowship. We had people, uh, I talked to people tonight that were asking me about it. All you do is you go online, and you can follow the link there, and you can find a Warrior Fellowship near you. And uh, if there is not one, that's a good time for you to start one. And uh, it's, it's amazing. The testimonies that are coming in of what God is doing, people getting saved and set free. And I could just go on and on. It's beautiful what God's doing. We, Kevin has a special gift for the, this uh, tour that we're doing, for lack of a better term. Uh, he has a number of his worship CDs among a smattering of other things on the, on the book table back there. And each one of these are $10 a piece. There's six of them. Uh, Dalton, volume one and two, Dalton, Georgia, Tampa. Hello? Uh, uh, New Orleans and Virginia Beach in Houston, Texas. And so you can get all six of these for $45 or you can uh, uh, get each one of them for 10. Let me tell you a quick little testimony. I don't even think I told Kevin this. I had to minister to somebody that was an hour and a half away from where I lived and I plugged one of these in my CD player in my car and all I did, no English, I prayed in the spirit for an hour and a half and I li listened to one of these CDs and I'm just telling you, when I got to the house where it's ministering, I, I felt like this push as I was walking in the door of the presence of God coming with me. So that whole, that whole hour and a half, the, all of Ryan was leaving, thankfully, and the Holy Spirit filled my car. And when I walked into the house and ministered to the people there, I literally felt like a heaven went in there with me. In the atmosphere carried from my car into the room uh, because I got, I got out of the way, as Kevin likes to say, and I, I just worshiped and prayed in the spirit for an hour and a half. And in the door, the, the heavens were open when I walked into that room uh, because they were all open over my life. So I said that to say, you know, we have uh, counselors, Christian psychologists that uh, email the ministry all the time and say, can I play this for my clients, you know? Uh, because they need this. So I'm just telling you, you because we're in the, such a worldly atmosphere all the time, you need to find yourself getting refreshed with a heavenly atmosphere, amen? And I'm telling you, it resets you, it refreshes you, and it gets you on track. So make sure you stop by the book table for that. Uh, you'll certainly be ministered to. And uh, you ready to receive an offering? 
Come on, you can do better now. You ready? Okay. We, uh, uh, we're thankful for your giving. And, uh, you know, the Bible makes it clear. Please, Paul, uh, in so many words, I'm paraphrasing, please don't give out of a compulsion. And because he, at, where, um, he never twisted anybody's arm to give. But he, he went out in that verse to say, but just a reminder, God loves a cheerful giver. And uh, somebody, when you leave here tonight and somebody says, why are you so happy? You should tell them, because I gave. I'm a cheerful giver. I'm happy. I'm a happy giver. And, uh, you know, one sign that, uh, that money doesn't have a hold on you is you're, you willingly let it go to the kingdom of God. You let God, you just take it, whatever you're putting in my heart. You know what I mean? Before you get here, the Bible says, just whatever you're putting in my heart, I release it to you, Lord, because I know you put that in my heart for me to do that. And I want to give out of my my abundance so somebody else can be ministered to with what I gave. So Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give, to, to sow into the kingdom of heaven, to be a, to partner with Warrior Notes and Kevin and Kathy in this ministry, Lord. We thank you for all that you're doing around the world. Lord, the testimonies that are coming in, we thank you for it, Lord. Increase the miracles, increase the testimonies. In Jesus' name, amen. And those of you watching online, if you want to do text to give, the number is on your screen right there. Thank you. Well, hello, Tampa. Man, tonight was epic. I know, and the exciting thing is, is every, we were, everywhere we go, um, Kevin and Kathy want to make this into a CD and music. And let me tell you, I don't know what we're going to call this, Glory Coast to Coast or something, but tonight was epic. Don't you agree? Transform me already. And so listen. Once you get full of worship and then you get full of the glory, then it's about giving out, right? And so we're so excited because we've been talking about this, but it's finally here. And I have the first set of the Warrior Notes Kindergarten Homeschool Curriculum. Isn't this awesome? Man, we are so excited about this because, you know, I know many in Florida love to homeschool, as we do in North Carolina and all over. And uh, this is so amazing. This was made from scratch, okay? We, there was no copy and pasting. We had spirit-filled believers praying in tongues, following Kevin and Kathy's heart as they created this. And they did this because they believe in your kids. They believe in the destiny of your children. And so all throughout these books, everything is weaved in here, the identity in Christ, the love of God, and everything they need to learn and the building blocks to be successful in this life. And because God says that they're supposed to be more than conquerors, right? And so all this, and the beautiful thing about this is that no matter what state you're in, I know we're in Florida, but if you're watching, no matter what state you're in, these not only meet standards, the state standards, they exceed them. Because the whole vision is that from kindergarten all the way to their doctorate, Warrior Notes has made a place for everyone to grow and the gifts and the calling of God in their life to be manifest, right? Isn't that wonderful? I don't know too many ministries doing that. But I've got, let's see, I've got New Testament, I've got Old Testament, I've got the project-based learning, I've got phonics, I've got math, I've got another math, and I got the second phonics book. So it's all seven books, and we really want to highlight them because, as a matter of fact, I had an email today, a partner emailed and said, I'm buying eight copies and I'm giving them out. And I've got grandmas saying that's what my babies need. I've got parents. Matter of fact, if you've been waiting to have a baby, this is your time. Go ahead, have the child. We're going to be ready for them. <laughs> We're going to take them from kindergarten to their doctorate. Isn't that wonderful? And so the beautiful thing is, is, and if any of you have homeschooled, you know that homeschool curriculum can get up there really quick. You can spend $1,000 in a blink of an eye, even on a kindergarten curriculum set. But Kevin and Kathy have this priced at $300. And for right now, because of the faithful partners that have been giving, for those that want to have been sewing into Warrior Notes, we're going to give it out for $150. That's the whole kindergarten set. So, isn't that incredible? So, if you've got family, if you've got friends, if you've got neighbors, you've got people in your church, I would encourage you to take advantage of the sale price because, I mean, that's, that just doesn't happen. And you guys, parents, you know this. 
And so right now, we don't have them here yet. We're going to start having at conferences very soon. But if you go to the website, kevinzadi.com, you can see it right on there on the store. And get yourself a copy because it's a wonderful thing. Wonderful thing. And so with that, how many partners and students do we have here tonight? Yeah, Tampa's got a lot of partners and students. Thank you guys so much. You guys are making this possible. And even as you, you know, a lot of you said you were watching Dalton last night and you're going to see us in Houston tomorrow night. Partners, you guys are making this possible. You are making it where people all around the world, on YouTube, on the app, all over, can receive from heaven. Because we get emails all the time that we have precious people that are in places where they might not have services like this. They're in countries where they are sneaking on YouTube and other places to get and receive from heaven. So partners, you guys are making this possible. You are helping uh, the mission of Warrior Notes, Kevin and Kathy's heart, to reach people where they're at. And so thank you so much for that. And if you're a student, let me tell you, we got our first graduation coming up. We are so excited. Ordering caps and gowns. And it's going to be live on the air in uh, the Houston Spirit School in August. And, man, we are so excited. So get your curriculum, get your CDs, because we believe in the destiny that's inside of you. And it's time to activate it and let it out. Amen? Yes. Amen. Dr. Kevin Zedai. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> well... I'm, I'm excited about what God is doing here in Florida. And boy, that ring. Okay. Yeah, so I'm excited about what God is doing. My, my feelings are coming out of my teeth right now. But anyway, um, the, the Lord wants, wants Florida to be predominant and be the leadership for this nation. And I thought... I thought it would be I thought it would be uh, Texas, and um, you know I had I had planned on going a lot to Texas, and, and the Lord would never let me do that as much. So I haven't I haven't done what I what I wanted to do because the Lord was saying that the 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 open heaven is in Florida, and so and and I'll tell you why I'll tell you why and I hope you learn from this is that is that uh, it takes people that are willing to do what God wants to do on the earth and Jesus taught us to pray this way he said he said thy kingdom come on the earth thy will be done thy kingdom come on the earth as it is in heaven and this is the key this is what I want to talk about tonight is about the mission and Jesus was very, very uh, mindful all the time of what the Father had sent him to do, and he, he stayed with the mission. And when you have a leader in a state of Florida that, that wants to, to maintain what is in heaven on the earth by righteousness and justice, then, then you'll see an expansion, and then you'll see all the ministers and ministries just go like this, so go toward that opportunity and this is what happens in a service. If, if you would all open up, then the, the spirit would, would automatically take me in a different direction. I would never open this laptop because I start ministering to you and confirming prophetically everything that you need confirmed in your life. And that has not happened in several years because I, I, God says I have nothing to confirm because they're not coming to me on their own. And he said, you have nothing to confirm, Kevin, so you just, you just preach the word. So for three hours every session, I just preach the word for years now. And I'm waiting for that tipping point where everybody starts to jump in and starts to say, yes, Lord, I'm going to stay mission ready. I'm going to stay with the mission and become like, you know, your governor. You know. It's, that wants to stand up for righteousness and justice. And, and to say, listen, you know, our ports are open. You know, all the ships, you can come here. So Texas is supposed to be doing this too. But it's, every state's supposed to be doing this. But it has to do with yielding and paying the price for being persecuted for righteousness' sake. So 
God has a righteous kingdom and a just kingdom, and it means that we're by the book. We're just strictly by the book. But the book is your book. It's, you have to own it. This is what I'm not seeing is, is that people are not being accountable to God, so there's no fear of God. There, there, there has to be a godly fear. What, what happens is if you're by the book and you're told, listen, this is the way it is, and if you, if you adhere to that, then there is a standard and God can come in because he does have his ways of doing things. His ways are not your ways. They're higher than, than your ways. You're, you're below on your understanding. You're below on everything. And you need to turn yourself in and be accountable and say, listen, I'm not, I'm not on. I'm not on. You know, I'm not, I'm not as accurate as I think I am. Now, you, you could spend 40 years. Or you could just, you could just humble yourself and just say, listen, I need help. And the mission that God has for this earth was expressed through Jesus Christ. He came and revealed the Father. So everything he said was the Father's words. Everything that he did was the Father's works. He set an example. And he did it so accurately that they killed him in three and a half years of ministry. And I've already lasted five. So I haven't offended enough people yet because righteousness will offend people who do not want to be accountable. Now, listen, it's just a matter of time. If you're not abiding correctly with what God has already established, it's just a matter of time before you pay for it. Sometimes, sometimes it just goes into your account. Paul said, some people's judgment is evident and instant. He said, others, it follows them till the day of judgment. But if you judge yourself, Paul said, you won't be judged with the world. So he said, when you come to the table of the Lord, the communion table, judge yourself, lest you, when you drink of the cup, you drink upon yourself judgment. Have I mentioned judgment enough yet? Because see, there's words that are just disappearing from our vocabulary. But the thing of it is, the bottom line is, is that God is just and righteous and he's not going to compromise. And people have compromised and that's why we can't even fight the disease of the weak. The Greek alphabet. And now it's monkey. It might be dragon next week. It might be alligator. I don't know. Do alligators always get left out? Okay, but the thing that is, is are you ready? Are you ready for what God has for you, instead of trying to brace for the next thing that happens. See, that's, that's what I'm telling you. We're behind the curve. We're behind if we're bracing for the next bad thing. That is not what is the kingdom. The kingdom is righteousness and justice. It's joy. The kingdom is joy in the Holy Spirit. Righteousness, joy in the Holy Spirit. So you've got, to, you've got to yield to joy, but joy is a spiritual attribute of, of, of God. It's not happiness. It's not fun. Joy is a gift of the Spirit. It's a personality trait of God himself. Joy is what you need to yield to. It's part of the kingdom. Being accountable is not always fun, but it is necessary because you want to keep your hands inside the ride. You want to be streamlined. You want to be accountable. You want, you want to move with the, with the Spirit. So I, I find that Florida has yielded and has been chosen, but many have been called, but few have been chosen, to quote a famous person. So get your hands inside the ride, duct tape your hands to the handlebar if you have to, and stay in your track, stay in your mission, and allow God to use you. 
But what it is, is you're going to have to stand up for righteousness. You're going to have to stand up because people, they need you to take up their case for them. There, there, there are so many of, of all of us where we could, we could go through and find out what you're going through. We have to be as leaders. That's why I'm here. I'm doing this in target cities and then next year in target countries, training leadership to take over the warrior fellowships. We've got 1,600 of them. We could have thousands more. We just don't have enough people to manage all that. But I want, we potentially, if we have 27,000 students, we potentially have 27,000 pastors because anybody that has the Holy Spirit inside of them can teach a Bible study. Any one of you can do that. But can you be chosen? See, chosen means you're accountable, which means you lip it up. And you're, you're not a fair weather Christian. You're not a snowflake. One degree and you melt. You're just, any one moment, you're just, you're just on the edge of melting. This is not what God has called us to. Jesus set his face like flint towards Jerusalem. Why? Because that was God's, the Father's goal, was for him to go to Jerusalem and be hung on a cross. So when Peter spoke by Satan and said, you won't do this, he said, get behind me, Satan. Why do he say get behind? Because he was now in the way and he was a disciple. He was a Christian. He was in Jesus' way, just like that. Don't find yourself on the wrong side of him. This is what Jesus, this is one of the ones that I was not allowed to share in public People told me, you can't share these visitations, certain visitations of Jesus. So there's three or four that I wasn't allowed to say because it was too hard. Like Jesus appearing to me and saying, don't find yourself on the wrong side of me. That doesn't make people feel good. But see, that's why we're in the condition. That's why we're snowflakes. One degree and we melt. You got to lip it up and be accountable. You're on a mission. Jesus set his face like flint. He didn't consider himself equal with God when he was here on the earth. He considered it nothing. He became a servant. He completely laid aside his divinity and became a servant of all. And he did what the father told him. He was submissive to the point of death. I've just quoted scripture in my own way. You are called to a higher walk with God, a walk where you represent the kingdom on the earth, which means signs and wonders and miracles will follow you because you are speaking the word. If you're speaking the word of God and preaching the good news, signs and wonders are going to follow you. It is inevitable. God is not mocked. A man will reap what he sows. If we're not, sow, if we're not reaping, then we're not sowing. Okay, and I'm not talking about money, so just relax. I'm talking about the Word of God. It's impossible for the Word of God to not produce. It's impossible if it has the proper soil. The soil is your heart. According to Scripture, the soils, four of them, were the conditions of man's heart. So it doesn't have to do with the Word. It has to do with your heart. So it's the parable of the soils, not the parable of the sower. Sower is understood. Took a sentence to explain the sower and the word, which is a seed. It's not money. But it took paragraphs to describe each condition. There was only one out of four that produced a crop. That means that out of all the people in here, we got five or six hundred people, whatever we have in here. That means that only one fourth, according to the parable, will actually have seed that takes root in the soil according to what Jesus said. So out of 100, you have 25. Then out of the 25, it says that there is a 30, 60, and 100-fold within that 25 people. Now, this is out of 100 people. The seed gets thrown on all the soils, but only 25 actually took root. And out of the 25, 
you can split it into three, 30, 60, and 100. There's only eight that got a hundredfold return on the word of God. This is the absolute truth that Jesus spoke. Okay, so that means that all of us have to look at our hearts to see what our condition of our heart is and not worry about other people because I'll take the seed that bounces off you. I will take out the birds that are coming into your yard and taking the seed. I'll knock them out and I'll take the seed. I want all the seed. If you don't want it, then I'll take it. But I'm not going to eat it. I'm going to plant it. I'm going to put it inside of me and I'm going to see the word of God to come to pass. All of you are supposed to produce fruit in keeping with repentance. So you keep with repentance, which means you fear God. Listen, I met him. I fear him. And you can even write a book about it and say that Kevin fears God. That he's, you know, because I, I fear him. It's not a holy awe. I literally felt like I was going to die when he showed up in my room. When Jesus showed up in my room, I thought I was going to die. I was screaming for mercy. And I was spirit-filled, born again, and a minister. And very immature because I felt like my bones were shaking inside of me and my flesh was gonna peel off my bones. Doesn't sound like a holy respect, does it? I fell onto my bed. My bed frame bent to where in the middle it was touching the floor. It bent from the glory of the, the heavenly glory that was coming from Jesus, it was so weighty that it bent steel. It bent it to the floor. It bent my roommate. My roommate didn't even believe like I did, but he does now. His bed bent. He was screaming like a little girl. He screamed and screamed for mercy. He started repenting of all his sins. A minister, spirit-filled, Bible school, screaming like a little girl. Why? It was fear. He's an awesome God, and he's way more than we can handle. If it wasn't for Jesus, God the Father wouldn't even look our way. I know that, but I can't say that in public, so I don't. I d <laughs> so just erase the tape. Listen, God is holy, and when he says something, it separates you from the world. So when he talks to you, and he plants his voice inside of you, his word. It produces fruit, but you cannot be part of the world. You're, you don't even have the same genetics. You're, you're not part of the world. And so Florida has been cho uh, chosen. But many more states must follow. We must, we must continue to increase and get back to where we should have been. If we would have, this would have never happened. Did you hear me? Do you want me to repeat it? This would never have happened in our nation if we had taken, at least read history and learned. Other people in other countries would tell you, you guys are messing up. At what point do you just say, you know what? Even if it's just me, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to say, we're messing up. And we need to get back to the way it's supposed to be. The kingdom of God is advancing at an alarming rate, but it's spiritual. And most of the time, even right now in this room, there are so many angels in this room that have been sent to help you. But they can't help you because there's nothing inside of you that makes it possible for you to stay in step with an angel right now. You can't stay in step with an angel who has been sent by God, knows your books, knows exactly what you're supposed to be doing. If you don't even have an inkling of it, they can't help you. They can only bring you to meetings like this where someone's preaching the word, but they can't preach the word. They don't even understand salvation. In fact, they're wondering why God loves us so much. They, don't, they, it, they can't fathom the love of God. They, they don't understand it. They understand his holiness. They understand his righteousness and they fear him. But they don't understand why God took an extra step for man. 
because he did. He took an extra step and it was a big one. And he gave his only son for all of us. And Jesus himself is seated at the right hand of God right now. He's looking over at this place and he's smiling. And, he, and he's turning to the Father. He goes, you know what? I think they're going to get it tonight. I think they're going to get it tonight. This is, this is, there's so much, there's so much, there's so much available for all of us. It doesn't matter. The gospel should work at any time in history, in any nation, it shouldn't matter. Listen, there were people that got delivered and healed under previous presidents. <laughs> Jesus went around doing good and healing everyone that was oppressed of the devil in Acts 10, 38. That was when Herod was there. That is... That, it, that is when Caesar, Augustus was in charge and Rome was taken over Israel. And Jesus was roaming the streets and there was occupation from another country as he walked the streets. And he never addressed it. When John the Baptist was thrown in jail, he never went and even visited him. John had to send somebody and say, are you really the one because I'm in jail. Did I mess up? But you remember, he did say at the River Jordan, behold, the Lamb of God. I must decrease, he must increase. And then he stood up for righteousness and got thrown in jail. And then he was beheaded because he came against Jezebel. Because he said, you shouldn't be married to that woman. She got mad. She got offended. So she had him beheaded. Jesus didn't stop it, didn't, didn't even go visit him. Why? Because he was on a certain mission. And so I want to talk about that tonight, is that you have, you have a task at hand. You have a mission, but it's not necessarily what you think. It's who you are. It speaks louder than what you say even. I, you don't have to defend yourself. Jesus didn't defend himself. He was the son of God, but he came as a son of man. So everything he did was as a man anointed by the Holy Spirit. All right, so... Paul, Paul reveals these things. Let's look at this in um, Ephesians real quick. Ooh, I'm excited about tomorrow night. The title's Understanding Time. It's going to be really good. What do we got here tonight? Okay, remembering the mission. Go to sleep, Siri. Good night. All right, remembering the mission. All right, so Paul said this. This is very interesting. And this is how we get, we get, we get the shock, the spiritual shock we need because we're not accountable. Listen, you think, you think you're submissive and accountable, but when you meet a holy God and you realize that he's everything and you're nothing, and, you know, that, that doesn't go over well with the Word of Faith movement, But really, when I met Jesus, I knew I was nothing and he was everything. But he made me something. But I have to stay in submission to that. In other words, I'm always going to be learning. I'm always going to be corrected. I'm always going to be a little bit behind, but I'm going somewhere to happen. But I, 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 always, have to, I always have to have that mindset that I, I, I am not it. I don't... And I don't need the attention. I don't need to be doing this. I'd rather be home right now. I don't need the attention. I don't need your validation. What I need is your cooperation. I need you to hear the word of God and obey it. I challenge you tonight to have ears to hear. Okay, this is what Paul said. This is what has been preached from the beginning. Why is it that 2,000 years later, we think we know better? 
Why is it that the message has not stayed pure? It's because we're in this fallen world and this fallen world is, is got a prince of the power of the air. I mean, if you want to bring the Bible into it, this is the problem is, is that Christians have, have ceased to respect the spirit realm and ceased to respect the fact that they have an enemy and that he is ruthless. He is a terrorist. He does not have a conscience. He is a narcissist. He is the first narcissist. And he hates people. He loves himself. Just ask him. He'll tell you. He hates, he hates everyone. He does not lose any sleep over you. He could care less whether you're crying or laughing. And you've never even met Satan. But he hates you. There's no repentance for him, so don't even think about it. He doesn't have a conscience. And, and it's very interesting that I've had people that feel sorry for Satan. And they, I've had Christians that I thought were my friends told me, stop rebuking him. You're not supposed to address him. Well, there went half the Bible away. Listen, we've been given authority over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, it says. Nothing by any means shall harm you. So if we don't, if we don't enforce what Jesus told us to enforce, who will? But what has happened is we backed off thinking that he's going to have mercy on us. The Satan is going to back off too. He doesn't back off because you back off. He kills, steals, and destroys. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. This is the test. Okay, so tonight Jesus comes with his sword. He, he is the word of God. The word of God is a sword. Sharper than any two-edged sword is his word. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. It's two-edged. One is to cut you, and one is to cut your enemy. When God speaks, he divides. Sounds like cutting to me. He, he separates between your soul and your spirit, it says in Hebrews 4. That means that there's a part of you that's an emotional, intellectual, and it involves your will. And then there's a part of you that's a spiritual part of you that is born again and where the Spirit of God dwells. This means that your mind, your will, and your emotions must be transformed. That means that they're not, your mind, your will, and your emotions is not saved. It must be transformed according to Romans 12. Okay, so your mind needs to be educated. Your spirit needs to receive the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. So there's two things going on there. Okay, so you're transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, this is what Paul said. In Ephesians 2, he said, once you were dead, once you were dead, because of your disobedience, which means that now you must be obedient. That's nice. It says, because of your disobedience and many sins, you were dead. You used to live in sin. Now he's talking to Christians. You used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers of the unseen world. I'm reading the Bible here. This is what we just went through for two years. But this was actually written in jail in 60 AD. He is the spirit at work in the hearts. Uh-oh of those who refuse to obey God, who refuse to obey God, which means that when Peter refused 
to obey God. When he refused the grafted word, he spoke by Satan. And Jesus said, you're in my way. Get behind me. This is his disciple. And all of a sudden, Peter's opposing the mission. Do you get it? He's opposing the mission, and now he's in the way. Are you in the way? Well, your angels are the ones I want to talk to about that because they're going to they're gonna tell me if you're in the way or not or if you're cooperating. But the only commonality that they have and you have is the word of God has been spoken and it's been established already. So they hearken unto the voice of the Lord. They do his will. They do his bidding, it says. They hearken unto his voice and they do his bidding. They've been sent to minister not to those. It says for those who are going to inherit salvation. For those, not to those. And we think angels come to get us out of a mess all the time. But I'm telling you by the Spirit of God that that is not God's perfect will. God's perfect will is that you hear the word of God and you obey, and then the, the, the angels come and minister for you. You get it, right? So we're, we're supposed to be cooperating and being part of the answer. I don't consider the angelic assignment as you going through a red light and them having to clean up the mess for that. If you're going to play in the street or pet alligators, those are the two things. That's, my, that's how I live. I don't pet alligators and I don't play in the street. I don't hang around and pet people that are alligators. People that want to eat you, you don't play with them. And you don't play in the street. In other words, your environment, you choose it and you choose your friends. That's my two rules. I choose who I'm around because if it's I and me and wants to eat me, then I don't, they're not my friend. And so you end up being alone. You end up not being able to trust very many people. But you choose your, your friends and get somebody that doesn't have as many teeth. <laughs> or at least feed them well. Feed them well. And you don't play in the street where it's already a risk. Okay? This is how you live. This, those are the two rules I live by. This is what I've learned. Okay? But here it says that there is an unseen world and the commander of the powers of the air is Satan. And that the people in the world are obeying the devil. Now, this is the thing you have to accept. And you have to accept this. If you don't, you're going to be bruised and chewed up. And you're going to, when I come back again, you're going to have more stories. And you're going to have marks on you where people chewed on you. If you don't, if you don't resolve right now that a person who is not obeying God, you have to, re, you have to resolve it that a person who is in the world, who is not born again, who does not have the Spirit of God in them, who is not a Christian and is obeying God, that that person has no way to withstand the Spirit of the world. It's because it says right here, if you read on, it says, as you were, where you had no ability to withstand him. You had no ability to withstand that Spirit. But now that you are in Christ, you can say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. Let's read on. All of you, verse three, all of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, has loved us so much that even though we were dead because of sins, he gave us life when he raised us when he raised Christ from the dead, it is only by God's grace that you're saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ. And he seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. 
All right, so verse 7 says, So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with him. Now, that's a lot of words, but the bottom line is, is that if we die with him, we are raised with him. So we have to put to death the misdeeds of the body, to quote Paul. And that is in Romans 8. If you read the first five verses of Romans 8, you'll understand what I'm saying here. It says that if you yield to the flesh, you're an enemy. You, you, that that is, makes you an enemy. And, and this is where people aren't accountable, is, is that when you choose to use, yield to the flesh, the, the spirit of this world is allowed, has permission to enter into that situation. So you have to be accountable. And I'm telling you this because as leaders, this is leadership training, you, you, have, to, you have to set the pace. And wh- however you set it, that's how it's going to be. And, and people are going to look for someone to lead. In an emergency, I've seen it so many times, in an emergency, people were waiting for someone else to do it. And I remember, I remember this happened just two years ago when I was speaking. I was taken between services to eat. And as I'm eating, and I'm just, just feeling the Spirit of God like I am now, and I could hardly move. I don't even know how I'm standing now. But I was sitting there eating, and somebody screamed from the kitchen and said, Kevin, get in here. When I got there, the, the, the person... I was ready to pass out from choking and had food lodged in their throat. Well, I didn't say, well, you know what? You know, I'm the speaker and I got to eat. No, I immediately went behind her, lifted her off the ground and gave her the Heimlich and the food went flying and she passed out as I was doing the Heimlich because she had been, you know, a couple minutes but I didn't even think. But you know, for 30 years, I did recurrent training for my job. And it became second nature just to do that. I didn't even think about it. I just did what my training had trained me to do. It became part of me. I'm trying to tell you this. As Christians, we're not being told this. We need to make it so that our life responds immediately as leadership. Because if you're waiting for someone else to do it, forget it. It's not going to happen. Listen, I waited. I've been just doing this five years. I, I, I did. Kathy and I, we were at every meeting. We went to every. We had, I got a bald spot on my head from all the generals laying hands on me. <laughs> and you know what? You know what made the difference? Is when I decided I want to be a general. Well, to be a general, you have to be a leader. If, to be a leader, you have to be accountable. To be accountable means that you're chosen, not just called. You have to qualify for it. In other words, you've got to go through a process of qualification. And the spirit is already willing. And the angels are already willing. But they're waiting for you. And you're waiting for them. And there's a stare down. But guess what? Time is ticking away, and the disease of the week is coming. And challenges financially are coming. And the only thing left is you. The only thing left is you, because you're waiting for someone to stand up and start handing out food. Well, then you just go and start handing out food. You, you buy two of everything, and you hand one out. You, you don't wait you do something now for someone that can't pay you back. You start to do things and bring value to people that, that you validate them by saying, God told me. You want to be a prophet? Just go buy a can of beans and give it to somebody and say, God told me to give this to you. You're a prophet. You're actually non-profit, but... <laughs> now think about this. You, you, you 
want to give a word to somebody? Just tell them to repent. You're, you're probably 100% correct all the time. <laughs> you won't even miss God. Just say repent. And just, just, just build, build your confidence up by speaking the word of God to people. Give, give out and flip it on the devil because everybody has needs. But it says that God, he provides for our, our needs according to his riches and glory. In Christ Jesus, he provides for you. He can do it exceedingly above whatever you can ask or think. Okay, if you flip it and you make yourself a conduit and you start to focus on just pick somebody that can't pay you back. Just concentrate on someone and pray for them. And I just did that. I just did that this week. I've been actually for several weeks. I've been praying for one individual. Never met them been praying, praying, praying. And I, I, I showed my wife, Kathy. I said, hey, hey, this lady, I'm praying for her. I can't stop praying for her. And I, I, I'm going to meet her. And so last night, as I'm preaching, she's in the audience. So I just called her out and prayed for her. That's all it takes just start praying for someone. Go in space, Booker, my face, you know. <laughs> and pick somebody. <laughs> I'm not giving them any press. Okay, so you, you pick somebody and you just, you target fixate on somebody in prayer. And God will send them to you. You just focus on somebody, and, and it doesn't matter if you ever meet them. You just do something for someone. You do it in secret. You pay for the car behind you when you go through the drive through You do something for someone, and, and you just tell the, the person, just tell them that Jesus loves them. And it'll speak louder than your bumper sticker. Okay? All right, so... All right, Ephesians 3, verse 1, it says, When I think of all this, I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ, for the benefit of the Gentiles, assuming, by the way, that you know God gave me the special responsibility of extending his grace to you Gentiles. So Paul's mission was strictly to the Gentiles, but he was a Jew. He, these people that he was called to were on the other side of the track. The wrong side of the track in his mind. But God said, this is what he's assigned to do. So his whole goal was to minister to the Gentile nations. As you read what I've written to you in verse 4, it says, I understand, you understand my insight into the plan, the plan, the mission regarding Christ. God did not reveal it in previous generations, but now by the Spirit, by the Spirit, he has revealed it to his holy apostles and prophets. Okay, so the plan, as we see here, is God's purpose in verse 10 was to use the church. It says his purpose was to use the church to, are you ready? If you get this, I'll, I'll quit. I'll quit right now. We can go back and worship. It says the purpose or the plan or the strategy or the mission is to use the church to display his wisdom. We're supposed to be displaying his wisdom. It doesn't mean words. People should know. Okay, how do they know? God manifests in your life. Why? Because... In any situation, you stand up and you be the leader. You be the initiator because you're training your accountability, your fear of, of your commander, your respect for him, but your love for him. You, if you love him, you obey him. You stand up and say, well, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm not going to wait for someone else to do it. I'm going to do it. If someone needs clothes, if someone needs food, if someone needs a friend, then you're it. 
Angels then will minister for you. Why? Check it out. It's for those who are going to inherit salvation. That means that you're working with angels to minister to others. It, we get this selfish idea, as we always do, that it's all about me. But it's not. And it's embarrassing to me when I passed away on, that, on the table and Jesus told me, it's not about you, Kevin. It's about all the people that I'm sending you back to. Because I told him I'm not going back. And he said, it's not about you. Isn't it embarrassing that I got to be told by the head of the church that it's not about me? But see, I thought that everything that was given to me in Christ was for me. But I realize now that Paul said, no, this was the mystery from the beginning that has been hidden in all the ages past, but now has been revealed through the Spirit at this time. And the angels have been sent to minister for you. In other words, whatever you stand up for, righteousness, and you take up people's cases, you bring justice into a person's life by saying, listen, God doesn't want you sick anymore. I'm going to pray for you. God doesn't want you poor to where you can't eat, you can't drive, you can't get somewhere, you can't provide for your kids. You, you come in and you help somebody then that brings God's righteousness and justice to that situation. And then his, he's displayed through you. Do you get it? Okay, but this is the key. And this is why Christians are getting hit so badly. Is, is It says it right here. It's, it says it right here. It says this, the purpose of God is to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. So all these evil spirits, all these evil spirits, all these hierarchy in the heavenly realms. Tomorrow morning, we're going to fly through the devil's living room. All these hierarchies in the heavenly realms, we're on display to announce God's kingdom, his righteousness. Paul said at the end of the end of verse 13, he says, I'm suffering for you. You should feel honored. He took a stand, and now he's asking everyone to come in and cooperate. Okay, now, when I just said that, you could feel the shift in the room because the angels in the room, because each of us has an angel. But a lot of them have a belly now because they haven't been working very hard. <laughs> and the reason they haven't been working very hard is you have it you haven't displayed and manifested. And it has to do with you lipping it up and training to respond and be a leader. And that's why I'm here tonight. And I'm going to do this everywhere. I'm going to wear the devil out. I'm going to wear him out. Bothered me in the book of Revelation where it says that Satan was wearing out the saints. It bothered me as a kid. I go, why is he allowed to do that? And I didn't know that we were allowing it. Now, I have seen, I have seen angels 
Stand there. Stand right there. Full, bright, smiling angels. And as soon as I agreed with God, they went poof and a streak of light went and they went to start to do their work. I've seen it happen. Poof, this stretch of light, it stretched light. It, it stretched it out. And, and science understands this, but it literally, it, it literally warped time. There was a, a warp. It, and I could see light stretch. I've watched Kathy and I, when we were in Germany, we, I was standing up praying for people. And there was still a whole line of people. And this streak of light, you can see it, you can see it on the film. A streak of light comes by me and knocks everybody down, including the translator, because I didn't have Sven with me. This streak of light comes right past me and knocks everybody else down. Everybody else was laying down. Here in the United States, ministers have to push you over. <laughs> it's just like the smoke machines. We have smoke machines and lights because the glory is, it's Ichabod. The glory isn't here, so you got to manufacture it. And if the glory is not here, then you got to push people. No, you don't have to push people over. You know, and you don't need a fire tunnel. You don't need a line. You are a fire tunnel, and you're supposed to be ministering everywhere you go. You're supposed to be creating vortices. Okay, so that angel came, and he was... I got right through customs, and he didn't. He got held up. It took four days. Now listen, in every country, that angel came and stood beside me. I could feel him there. But he, he was not there in Germany. And I don't know if his papers were wrong or what. <laughs> Maybe he didn't have a raft. That is everybody. He was being withstood entering into that country. You know, those Germans, you know, they're little. <laughs> but he came, and when he came, he ministered for me. So the shift happened in this room because the angels, they are supposed to be walking with you and assisting you in what you're called to do. But people that are disobedient, they suffer greatly, and it doesn't display God's righteousness. It doesn't display his intent. And so we judge our theology based on experience, which is not correct. Our theology, our belief system is based on the word of God, regardless if it happens or not. You can't compromise and click back because then what happens is, is the next person follows you and then they click it back even more. And before you know it, you're in a stall. You, you, you don't click it back just because it's not working. You push it forward. You, you apply pressure when pressure is applied. When the devil hits me, I hit him back twice. Bam, bam. It feels like one hit, but it was two. I don't allow him to get the gratification of succeeding. So I make sure that I double my giving. If he steals from me, I double my giving. And I do it to somebody that can't pay me back because then it's even a, a greater reward. And if you can get a child, and if you can do it for a child, triple bonus. Because those, their angels report you to the Father. According to Jesus, if you touch a child, they're, the angels in heaven always see the face of their father. Their angels always see the face of their father is what it says. You've got to start to frame your thinking like this. You need to find a child as, as fast as you can and do something for them. You need to get someone that can't help themselves and you need to help them. You need to bring justice to their lives. You need to bring love to their lives. You need to help and bring value to people. That's what you need to do. Because what happens is, is God has to pay you back. 
listen, there, there's a lot of this going on where you, know, you do favors for somebody and then you expect a favor back. That is not of God. And it's gotten in the ministry. Jesus told the rich man, he said, sell everything you have. And he didn't say, and give the money to my ministry. He said, give it to the poor, which means he can never get it back. Then follow me. Well, see, what, what he was saying was that the, the, the rich people, they take care of each other. So you, you, you kind of like you, you just pat each other on the back. Because you might need the favor sometime. Jesus was eliminating that from his options. Don't you get what, what, how he, the rich man was sad because he couldn't give it to one of his rich friends. Because essentially, it's just a shell game that way. I don't know if you get, but this is what we do. We, we, We shell it out. And we, we have all our little options. And what has happened is it's whittled down to very little options. And we need God's miracle in our life. We need healing that we can't seem to get from people that are practicing on us. And I, I'm, not, I'm not a guinea pig. If I'm paying somebody interest, I'm in the wrong business. They should be paying me. I'm giving them my money. They need to pay me. This is no favor here. Think about it. The kingdom of God means that if you lose everything, you gain everything. The only way that you're going to be healed is by a miracle. The only way that you are going to resolve your financial difficulties is a miracle. It's whittling down to that. If you continue to try to shell it out in some sort of game, figuring your options, and you're trying to, it gets tighter and tighter and tighter, then you're just delaying the inevitable. It's better just to turn yourself in and be accountable. It's not your money, it's not your life, it's not your body. This is not your life. It's not your own. It never was. Listen, right now, right now, there are children that are depending upon your obedience and you don't even know it. There's a generation coming up that is actually depending upon you to be faithful. There are people that don't even know God and they're going to know God because they're depending upon you to be faithful and not back off. The most effective prayer that I have ever prayed, you won't hear this from a minister because I don't even consider myself a minister. I'm not allowed to have a jet if I'm a minister. So I'm not a minister. My most effective prayer is help. I scream it out to God, help. I do it, I did it before I walked up here. When I go back to my room, I'm going to say help because I'm going to feel like I did nothing for you. That's how I feel when I walk back to my room. I lay on my bed and I tear up because I feel like I didn't do anything for anybody because there's so much in me and I can't seem to get it out even in three hours. I can't seem to get it out so that it's transferred to where you all are lit up and you don't need jumper cables. You are jumper cables. I feel at a lot. Every single, I, I wake up, I'll wake up at 3 a.m. I don't know why. I wake up at 3 a.m. And I, the first thing out of my mouth is, I'll do better tonight. Why do I feel that way? I'll tell you why. Because we're behind the curve. The body of Christ is behind the curve and I'm carrying that burden. I'd have a full set of hair. I do. I feel like I'm carrying a burden for people because I want to bring justice to, to people's lives. But the only way that I get, I've got to get them on the page, on the mission, I've got to get you to accept and sign off that your life is not your own and that you're going to own it. And you're going to make it to heaven. This is not your goal. Your goal has already been met about going to heaven if you've accepted Christ. 
Now just remain in him. Make your calling and election sure is what, is what the apostles say. You want to be secure and go to heaven? Make your calling and election sure. Which means, Paul said, will you be found in him? Well, yeah, you're in him. Okay, will you be found in him? Paul said, if I don't discipline my body, he said that I could end up as an apostle preaching Christ, that I could end up a castaway because I did not discipline my body. So literally in Greek it says, I beat my body black and blue in order that after I have preached Christ that I myself am not disqualified. So I always feel like I am not quite there. And Paul even said this. He said, I don't say that I've obtained it yet, but he said, going toward the mark, I continue on, I press on. So that tonight I just want to encourage you that you are the leadership. God has just walked up to you and tagged you and says, you're it. You're it. If you're looking at a baton in your hand, just start running. That's the first thing that you do is you don't question it. If you look down, you'll have a baton. There are angels that have been sent to help you. God has a perfect plan for you. He has a perfect plan. It has to do with you obtaining and understanding the way that God works. He's given us everything we need for life and godliness through those precious promises, that through those promises we can be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world. Did I mention escape? Having escaped the corruption of the world, which is caused by lust. So, I, listen, the spirit that's on me tonight that I feel is on you is, is the prophet that stood there and said, throw Jezebel down. Yeah. Why, why, was it, why did it take somebody to just stand up to her? She's, he, he stood there and said, just throw her down. And the eunuchs, you know, they're eunuchs, so she had no power over them, if you know what I mean. So, okay, yeah, we'll do it. If you want to know what's going on in this nation, it's Jezebel. Yeah. It's literally Jezebel. And if you, I know you don't know this, but all you students are going to learn this. The king of Tyre was a spiritual entity that was behind the prince of Tyre mm -hmm. in Ezekiel 28. There's a king and there's a prince. The prince was an earthly king that is described as being there entire, but then it goes in to a entity that was in the Garden of Eden. The king of Tyre was not there. I mean, the prince of Tyre. The king was Satan himself, the cherub, the covered. But did you know that Tyre, that king, that prince, that his daughter was Jezebel? So that spirit that was behind the prince of Tyre, that king that was behind the prince of Tyre, influenced that family, and Jezebel came out of that womb. Peter, in 2 Peter, he says that we are partakers of the divine nature because of the precious promises. We are partakers of the divine nature. That'll get you kicked out of church for saying that, being a partaker of the divine nature. Okay, but it says, having escaped the corruption that is in the world caused by lust. It's Jezebel. It's a spirit of Jezebel. These evil spirits, they're disembodied spirits from the flood. There was sexual perversion that caused a hybrid race to be, to be put into the humans, and God had to destroy everything. Okay, the sexual perversion that caused the hybrid race, according to Genesis chapter 6, it says that everything was destroyed, but those spirits were disembodied. Well, now you see all this perversion. 
it's those spirits. It's those unclean, perverted spirits that are, that are still here. They're still here because the angels that left their abode, they're the ones that caused it. Those angels that left their abode, they are chained. So they are not demons because they're chained now. The demons that confronted Jesus said, have you come to torment us before our time? Peter said and Jude said that these angels that left their abode, they're already chained. If we want to bring the Bible into it. But the disembodied spirits confronted Jesus and said, have you come to torment us before our time? So their time had not come yet. So they can't be angels. Come on now. If you want to believe the Bible, you've got to go with it the whole way. Okay, so... It makes sense that these perverted spirits of these people that, that were judged by the flood, they don't have any resurrection. They don't have any way to repent. They hate you. But they are still on the earth because they confronted Jesus. So they couldn't have been the angels that were chained. Because the angels that left their abode, that happened way back. Okay, these spirits were still there. So they said, have you come to torment us before time? Jesus didn't address that. That's just as powerful as him addressing it. And they also asked him to not send them out of the area. So they wanted to stay where they were. Why? Because that's where they were before the flood. And they've created a realm of influence, a matrix, and they had control of that area and they don't want to leave that area because they fight each other and they're very territorial. So these evil spirits are withstanding you in Florida because that's where they were before the flood. And everywhere you go, you encounter something different. And after 30 years of flying for an airline, I kid you not, because I was in a city with Southwest. They didn't, they didn't do anything over an hour for a long time. They landed every hour. And I checked, and it holds more fuel than that. But they landed every hour, and in every hour, I was in a different city. And after 30 years, you could blindfold me and put me on a jet and when we land, I can tell you what city we're in because I learned the spiritual environment of that city. Now, who talks like this? Well, you should be talking like this because I don't consider myself anything above you. I'm just a believer. You all need to get to the place where you realize what I just told you is your mission on this earth. You are to push out, to drive out, to completely paralyze the enemy and not be paralyzed. You should never, ever freeze up. You should always keep moving and know that the sexual perversion that is in this generation, we have been delivered from it by being a partaker of the divine nature. So that is why Satan gets into the churches and has people back off so that they're not really leadership anymore. They're Cub Scout leaders. And they're good cooks. And they're activity directors. And they just like... And they just want to entertain you. They want to keep you. But they lose you by trying to keep you because they're not really creating the standard that angels can work with. And so the angels leave and they go somewhere where they can find someone that they can work with. And so what happens is, is that people that confront Jezebel, that confront all these, these evil spirits, they say, thanks for letting me know that you don't want to leave this area because you're going. And you want torment? You want torment? Listen to this. I'm going to speak in tongues. I'm going to prophesy. I'm going to hand out cans of beans. See, you have to do this. You, you can't wait 
We can't wait any longer. We're way behind it. Okay, so we're going to worship some more, and thank you for coming. Oh, it's still today. Good. All right, so there's a process. There's a process of discovery. Then once you discover, you have to judge it. Once you discover and you judge it, there's, there's the revelation. It's a revelation phase. So you have revelation. But after revelation, then you have to go to the next step, which is visitation. So you get visited. But don't stop there. There's habitation, which is where you dwell. This is when you can just, in a, in a flash of a second, you respond like a professional. You learn and you come, become accustomed. And you go, well, no, that's, that's just a perverted spirit. I'll take care of that. But I want to teach you. See, so you, what you do is you get to where I'm going to teach you how to do this yourself. And this has been the problem. We all depend on others to do it. We've been trained to, when, the, well, when the apostle comes to town, he'll take care of this or she. You know, that goes over well, but, you know, there, there is no gender in Christ. And if a woman can have Jesus, the Son of God, I, I think she can prophesy and preach. She can carry Jesus. So there's a process of discovery, but that revelation has to bring interaction to where you start to learn. And this is, this is where the mentoring phase is. You have revelation, but then there's a mentoring phase where you, you're under someone and you learn the ways of the Spirit through someone else. But there has to come this place where you are there and it's time for you to solo. It's time for you to have habitation. It's time for you to be able to tell evil spirits and they don't say, well, I know Paul and I know the person you're under at Warrior Knows, but who are you? No, they're not gonna say that. They're gonna know who you are. They're gonna have seen your picture in the post office in hell and you are, you are a threat. Think about it. You've been discouraged by the church on being spiritual. But see, to be a partaker of the divine nature, you gotta be spiritual because God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It's not a physical exercise. It's a spiritual, it's a spiritual exercise that becomes a manifestation where you don't need smoke machines and, and light shows. And you don't need chicken dinners and bingo and activities. You are the manifestation. You are. You're it. And just remind yourself of that because there are nine gifts of the Spirit. Paul said that each one of us has gifts of the Spirit severally as the Spirit wills. A couple is two. Several is three or more. So that means each one of you has at least three gifts of the Spirit in you out of the nine. That means that you don't need an apostle or a prophet or a pastor or a teacher or evangelist. They have been sent to build up the body. Okay, they've been sent and to get you into unity and maturity in the faith. That is in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, if you want to bring the Bible into it. That's what they're called to do. You're called to minister to each other and to go out and minister. If you remember, the apostles and the prophets in the book of Acts, they decided that they should dedicate their time to prayer and, the, and to the ministry of the word. So they appointed others to serve the tables. And Stephen, who had uncommon miracles, it says, notable miracles in, in his life. He was not an apostle. He was not a prophet. He was not a pastor, a teacher, or evangelist. He wasn't an expert. He was a pert. He's about this big. Stephen was not even an expert. He was a pert. So that's what I am. I'm a pert. But he had miracles, uncommon miracles, as a table server. 
And he, he, was so, he, was, he was so convincing that the Pharisees had him killed. He wasn't even a five-fold minister. But he was more effective. They didn't, they didn't go after the five-fold. They went after him. Why? He had notable miracles. So all of you, I want you, I want you to give yourself to God in this worship time. And I want you to determine that tonight that is going to be earmarked and noted in the log books of heaven that tonight you decided to go 110%. That you went full throttle and passed full throttle. And then you super glued it at that position. Listen, you don't have to have Jesus appear to you. You don't have to go to heaven and be sent back to, to do this. I don't get a reward like you do because I saw him and I was sent back and I was mad about it. You all get to hear the word and respond and you haven't seen him and yet you obey him. There is a great reward for that. So let's just worship. Let me, let's stand and let me pray for you. Listen, you don't need hands laid on you. You don't need another prophecy. You need to make a step in the right direction and you need to determine that you are the leader. You are the answer to someone's problem. You are a solution. You are a problem solver. You are a history maker and you can do this. This is what I need. I have already been told. I told my staff, we started at school. We started at school and I said, at the end of two years, you, we will have 17,000 students. Was that right? Was it two years? It seemed impossible. Four days before January 1st, we had 17,000 students. And this is what I told them. I said, we're going to 250,000 students. Because that's 250,000 pastors. And with 250,000 pastors, that will influence the earth. That will cause a major historic event in the spirit. But it starts right now with all of you. And if you're waiting for me to back off, I will not. I will not back off. I've already taped clips, duct tape them, like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I just take it in it. I'm, I'm not gonna run out of ammo because the Word of God is, is, not, is not gonna ever, ever be expendable. It's gonna continually replace itself. It's gonna continually produce fruit in your life. You're valuable. You can do this, okay, ready? This is not a gimmick. When I raise my hands and I pray for you, I know that every evil spirit will have to listen to me. I know that the Father already hears me. I know he wants to answer me. I'm praying according to the will of God. I'm not asking. He's already given the Holy Spirit. I don't have to ask for the Holy Spirit to come. He's already here. If you ask for the Holy Spirit, he goes, what do you want, I'm here. If you ask for your angel, he goes, what? What do you want? I've been waiting for you for three years. Okay? So this isn't a gimmick. You will receive. So I come against every evil spirit that's working against you right now in the name of Jesus. And by the authority of Jesus Christ and by his blood, I resist and I command every evil spirit to be pushed back right now. In the name of Jesus, I command it to desist. Every evil spirit will desist in its maneuvers against you right now. I break the power of trauma and rejection, discouragement. I break deception in Jesus' name. You foul lying devils, I command you to go in Jesus' name. And I break the power right now. And Father, I thank you that your spirit right now is here and it's setting people free. The Spirit is setting people free right now. And the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord says, don't resist me any longer. 
this is your last night of resistance. You will lay down your life this night. You will turn. The Spirit of the Lord is saying, you will turn to me and you will face me and you will obey me because I have need of you. Father, your face shines upon us in your favor. You smile upon us. You're going to work it out, Father. Those who are suffering because of other people's disobedience, the Lord is going to come and help you right now. You have suffered because of other people. And I break that, that power in your mind and in your emotions. I break that power right now. You're set free in Jesus' name. And now I just pray that the joy of the Lord would come upon you. The joy of the Lord would be your strength right now. Joy, 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 joy. Get over yourself. Get over it. There is great joy. There's fullness of joy in his presence. There's fullness of joy. Brittany's going to sing about it. She, she doesn't know it yet, but she's going to sing about it. The fullness of joy in his presence. I heard she has that gift. It's the power of suggestion. Come on now, yield to the joy. Come on. Get over yourself. Joy, 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 all the fullness of joy. In your presence is we to you now. And there's joy, 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 joy. All the fullness of joy. In your presence is we joy in your presence is real to you and there's joy 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 all the fullness of joy in his presence is real to you real to you tonight fully given all Your joy is filling us up, it's filling us up, fully given over. Oh, we're fully given over to you. Oh, your joy is filling us up, so much joy, so much joy. Oh, the fullness of joy in your presence. Oh, we can't stay the same Cause you're filling us up With the fullness of joy Oh, the fullness of joy In your presence, the Lord We're fully giving over to you Oh, we're fully giving over to you Got the joy of the Lord down in my heart. It's down in my heart to stay. I've got the joy of the Lord down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. I've got the joy of the Lord down in my heart. It's down in my heart to stay. I've got the joy, 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 joy unspeakable, never leaving, unspeakable joy. It's your joy that never leaves me. Oh, the joy of the Lord, it is my strength. You are my strength. It's your joy, Lord. It's your joy, Lord. It's the joy, the joy, the joy. And he, he, ha, ha, ho. It's your joy, God. It's your joy, God. And he, he, ha, ha, ho, ho. It's your joy, Lord. It's your joy, Lord. And he, 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 ha, ha. 
It's your joy, Lord. It's your joy always filling us up. Always filling us up. It's more than enough. It's more than enough. Oh, your joy everlasting. It's your joy everlasting. We don't have to stay in our sorrow any longer. It's your joy. It's your joy that's filling us up. It's your joy. We don't have to stay in our pain any longer. It's your joy. It's your joy, Lord. Your joy, your joy, your joy unspeakable, your joy unspeakable, oh, welling up inside of us, it's your joy unspeakable, so much joy in your presence, this is where we want to stay. joy in your presence fullness of joy and the joy of the Lord is my strength the joy of the Lord is my strength I can face anything I can face anything And I can't lose this joy Cause it's your strength, Lord That's giving me joy The joy of the Lord is my strength Hey, hey Hey Joy, 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 filling us up now. It's your joy, 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 it's your joy, joy, joy. It's your joy, Lord. Oh, the fullness of joy, the fullness of joy. And this is where we'll stay. This is where we'll stay. Right here in you, where your joy is abounding. We'll stay right here. Yes, we'll stay right here We'll stay right here Cause your joy is filling us up Oh Your joy is filling us up Oh Could we stay the same when we've come face to face with you? When we've come face to face with you, we can't stay the same. We can't stay the same. We can't stay where we've been. When we've come face to face with you. So this is where we'll stay. where we'll stay
yourself away again anew to the Lord give yourself I give myself let him hear away. you say I give you my life Lord let me finish my race anoint me to pick up the pace open my eyes to see away. open my ears to hear all of your goodness and your love towards me I receive your love Lord if you're in here and you don't know Jesus or if you're watching, pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, even if you do know Jesus, just pray with me, okay? Because there's going to be people watching online. This, this is going to go on for eternity, okay? So, you know, it says when the people praise the Lord, then the earth yielded her increase. So we've been worshiping and praising, and we've been keeping that going night after night, month after month, and there's a harvest that's ready to be yielded and to be brought in. So we're going to, um, there's people out there that need us to pray this prayer with them, okay? Or even if you're in this room and you need to pray this prayer, that you want to make sure that you know that Jesus is your Savior and you're going to heaven, that you've received that gift of eternal life. We're just going to help you receive that gift of eternal life. So just pray with me. Father, thank you for sending Jesus. Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I receive your gift of love, Lord. I repent of my sins. Help me to walk in the places you've called me to walk. Strengthen me to talk the talk you've called me to talk. I thank you, Lord, that I receive Jesus and I am born again. And I will finish my race and I will stand before you face to face. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, to baptize me 
and fill me with power and fire from on high. I ask you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit while I pray in other tongues. And I loose my tongue now. And even if you've never prayed in tongues or if you want a fresh filling, I'm going to pray for you now. Lord, I pray for anybody watching or in this room that wants to be filled with the Holy Spirit and with fire, that you just um, put your hand on yourself instead of me coming around to every person and say, fill me, Lord, with the Holy Spirit and fire. The Holy Spirit and fire. The Holy Spirit. This is a gift that we all need. Every single Christian needs this gift of the Holy Spirit with fire. We're not just born again and waiting for Jesus to come back. We're called to rule and reign by one Christ Jesus in this life now. People need you to be filled with the Holy Spirit so when they encounter you, you have the fire. So fill me now, Lord. And ask the, just release your tongue. Say, I pray in other tongues now. This is God's idea for us to pray in other tongues because the tongue is the rudder. Shabala ulande, where your mouth goes, your life goes. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. You want the Holy Spirit to pray through you for you and your family. People need you to be born again. People need you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not just for you. It's not just for you. This is how the disciples turned the world upside down. This is how the disciples went from denying Jesus to being crucified for Jesus. This is a safe place. Pray in other tongues. We thank you, Father, for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Fill us now. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fish in Akita. Fresh fish in Akita. Fresh fish in Akita. Fresh fun in Tequila Vandekele. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Malakala hola hala hola hala hola hala o reve o reve o reve vorana kasana sandeke posoto rabase boseke posoto boroso tokoto shalateke shogloteke let this fire go lord to the next generation and the next generation and the next generation lord we don't draw back what we press in we don't draw back but we press
Thank you. 